guys, welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new here, my name is Emily. Welcome to my motherhood channel where I take care of all things mom. And in this sense, it's kind of more of like a me thing. <laughs> I decided to volunteer at my church for their confirmation retreat and I'm planning on giving a talk. And I was given pretty like lenient, a pretty lenient description of what my talk was supposed to be about. It was supposed to be um, a who I am talk. And the bigger theme of the retreat is like knowing, loving, and serving the Lord. And that was all. But I have been inspired like week after week at church of like little things that I would say if I was going to give this talk. And so I just reached out to the person in charge and said, you know what? I feel called to give this talk for you. And I sent him my draft and he likes it. And then he asked me to make some decorations for this retreat as well. And again, it's, you know, since it's kind of like a broad theme of a retreat, it was really hard for me to think of how would I decorate for a bunch of teenagers that are kind of required to go on this retreat who may or may not want to be there and, you know, make it appealing and not cheesy. And I don't know how they're going to take my decoration idea, but what I keep coming back to is like a little Polaroid frame made out of like foam board. And then I want to incorporate like my balloon arch and then I might reuse Aubrey's like DIY willow table skirt from her birthday. So today you're going to get to see little pieces of me assembling this. And then I'm also going to share my talk with you guys as well. Now, the whole reason I, you know, you'll, you'll see the full effect of why I chose a Polaroid, but in my talk, I'm going to be referencing a picture of myself and I want, the kids are actually going to be bringing pictures of themselves um, because of my talk and what I'm going to share. So I wanted there to be a decoration where they could stand behind it, take a new picture, have it look like a Polaroid that's like in a scrapbook. So that's my vision. We'll see how well it plays out, but let's go ahead and prepare the foam board and the brown paper and like just kind of gather my supplies so that tonight when we go to the church to decorate, I'm not super stressed. So I got my little birthday basket here of like everything that I would possibly use for birthdays. I'm going to collect all of the balloons that were left over from previous parties. Got a whole pack here, which will be nice. My balloon arch kit. Got that. Here's the table skirt that I was hoping to use at least once more. So maybe this will come in handy. Got an extra one of these just in case. Some extra balloons. And right, then I'm going to need this guy and some balloon tape sticker things. So I don't know, maybe we'll have to get some more balloons or I can just try to make this work, but got that. And then lucky for me, I kind of hoard supplies from the Dollar Tree, so got that foam board and some brown paper. So I've saved like these queen comforter carrier things and it's actually like the perfect thing to bring these supplies so I can see what I'm looking for at the moment. But I'm gonna go in the kitchen right now and cut up the foam board. And then I'm on the bottom, I think I'm gonna write like child of God because I do reference that in my talk. And hopefully the kids will like it and not think it's super cheesy. I do feel like, you know, God's been speaking to me. I, don't, I never get to hear his voice. Like some people like hear the voice of God. I never seem to get that gift, but I do feel like this calling whenever I get these ideas in my head or it just like extra clarity. So I'm trying just to listen to my voice that is inspired by the Holy Spirit in my head. Um, I'm trying to listen to that and just go with it and trust it. So I kept coming back to this, you know, little Polaroid picture. I'm hoping that it is something that will speak to the kids and same with my talk. I'm, I'm hoping that they really get something out of it and that God can use me as a vessel to share his good news. So I know the lighting is not great, but I wanted to show you guys the sunset. I've loaded my car. I'm going to be heading to church now to set up the balloon arch and try to come up with some cool creation for this Polaroid idea of a de decoration thing. So that is what I'm going to do. And then I will show you guys a little time lapse of me setting it up and then I'll share my talk with you guys.
Before I get to my talk, I want you to look at this picture of this little girl and think of how you might describe her. This girl is ugly. She is fat. She is unlovable. She is not good enough, not smart enough, not attractive enough, too sensitive, too weird, too emotional, not worth making sacrifices for. I could go on. These are all things I've told this girl over the course of her life, and she believed me. As you probably assumed, this little girl is me. And whether or not any of those descriptions are or were true, they are not who I am. The same statement would still hold if I had described myself using nice adjectives. Good or bad, descriptive words aren't who I am. So who am I? To be completely honest, this topic has been one I've actually been struggling with a lot lately. And I think it is because I often fall back into the habit of defining who I am with my accomplishments or what I do. When I was younger, I defined myself as an all-star athlete, an actress, and a straight-A student. As I was preparing for this talk and reflecting on my past, I realized that little by little, God was trying to reshape how I viewed myself. When I was a sophomore in high school, I suffered a back injury at the prime of my softball career that set me back and let others shine in the position I had been so good at for so many years. As a senior, I was cast as the understudy for the role I so desperately wanted in our high school musical, a role they often double-casted. But they only gave the role to one person, meaning they could have also cast me too, but chose not to. Years later, in my doctorate program, I received my first and only b in a class, something I had stressed over for years and years. Before I left for grad school, I recognized that having a perfect GPA had become part of my identity and had caused me way too much stress. So when I finally received my first B, I threw myself a B party and celebrated my imperfections. We had brownies, bagel bites, bacon, and more. It was actually pretty great, and I wasn't super upset about it. God really helped soften the blow on that one because had my first B occurred in any of my previous 18 years of schooling, I would have had a total breakdown. Then even bigger changes to my identity occurred. I got married and being someone who chose to save sex for marriage and viewed my virginity as something incredibly special, which it was, when I gave that gift to my husband, I couldn't refer to myself as a virgin anymore. A big chunk of my identity, gone. When I earned my doctorate degree and finished my schooling for good, I couldn't refer to myself as a student anymore. That was another huge shift for me. No more report cards to be proud of or teachers to impress. Where was I gonna find my worth? These are just some of the ways that I have defined myself. And as I described, God has slowly stripped me of those definitions, leaving me with the question now of who am I? I could follow the same unproductive route of defining myself by my titles as a PhD, wife, mother, or even a YouTuber. However, no earthly job or title can ever fully encompass who I am. So here we are. I'm 32 years old and still trying to answer what seems to be a very simple question. Who am I? The best answer that I can give you after all of my reflecting is that I am a child of God. Now I know, I know, we hear that a lot. We see that on the little stickers that they give to the kids at church activities. But what does that mean? Well, as a mother of two small children, I'm getting a tiny glimpse at what God must feel for us. My baby relies on me for literally everything, and I mean everything. I nourish him, comfort him, guide him, and literally clean up his crap. And man, whew, there sure is a lot of it. And it stains. I can't tell you how many times I've had to scrub this little guy's clothes to make them look new. Anyways, I've made a lot of sacrifices for my little guy. Not sleeping being one of the big ones. 
When he needs me, I'm there. And despite the fact taking care of him is a lot of work, and I mean a lot, I absolutely love him. He brings me so much joy. When I make sacrifices for my baby, I can't help but think of how much more God does for us and has sacrificed for us. The sacrifices I make for my baby are also necessary for him to live. Similarly, God's sacrifice for us was that we too may live eternally with him. A child can't do much by themselves. So by recognizing that I am a child of God, I am accepting the fact that I need him. I need his nourishment, his comfort, his guidance, and I need him to clean up my crap, my sins, and the stains that they leave on my heart. My four-year-old has given me a different glimpse at our relationship with God. She can be quite defiant at times and often disobeys me, but I still love her. In some ways, I have found that forgiving her is easier than forgiving an adult. Perhaps this is reflective of our relationship with God, too. How often do we turn our back and defy him? Yet he is there willing to forgive us and welcome us back into his arms. My daughter also has no clue how much I do for her. So, of course, she doesn't thank me for things often. When she does show appreciation, it's often because she wants something. Similarly, we have so much to thank God for. But do we show our appreciation often? Do we tell him thank you just because? Or do we only praise him only when we want something? Maybe this is an area where we can grow. I've also noticed that children usually are quick to forgive and have huge hearts. When I was younger, I often fought with my siblings one minute and the next we were playing again. I also dreamt of owning a massive homeless shelter and foster home. Now, while I don't have the means to own those right now, I help where I can, making homeless bags for people that we see on the road. Having a servant's heart is a quality I often see in my four-year-old. For example, when I'm baking something in the kitchen, she usually comes up to me and asks if she can help. She may not know what every ingredient is for or even what I'm cooking up, but she wants to have a part in the process. Similarly, we are called to do the same with God. We may not know why certain situations are happening in our lives or how God plans on using them for the good, but we should trust that he knows what he's doing and be willing to serve him however we can. When we come to God, we should come to him as his children. You will likely see what I mean tomorrow when I bring my children to accompany me at Mass. They bring the good, the bad, and the ugly. They really don't hold anything back and show up as their genuine self. Similarly, we should bring everything, and I mean everything, to God. Too often, we only give him just the good or just the bad. We either make it seem like we don't need him at all and put up a front that everything is fine, or that everything is horrible, it's the end of the world, and God just needs to fix everything, especially the problems we often create for ourselves. God wants us to open our hearts to him, to be our true self with him, even if that means being uncomfortably vulnerable. That is something I'm continuing to work on, and I'm thankful God has blessed me with my two little reminders, even if they totally stress me out at Mass. Viewing ourselves as a child of God is twofold. On one hand, we can look at the ways we can aspire to embrace this childhood, to recognize our need for God in all aspects of our life, to be quick to forgive, and to have a serving heart. Or we can focus on how we can grow, to be more thankful for all God does for us, to appreciate his sacrifices so that we may have eternal life with him, and to trust him, to be vulnerable with him, and follow him as he guides us, since he knows best. So who am I? I am this little girl, and this little girl is a child of God, and she is loved beyond measure. Woohoo! 
you've made it to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday, you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.